Hello everyone, it's time for another corset video. So I have made around four or five corsets and stays for this channel and each one is a little different in its own way. So to continue that trend, today's corset is one that I actually haven't seen online all that often and that is a summer corset. Now, I first came across one in an ad from I think the 1890s, and it was advertised as an LR heavy crossbar net summer corset. Now, as far as I can tell, it looks like they started being produced in the early 1880s and continued being made up into the Edwardian era. This is just from what I can see from different ads of these types of corsets. Now another type of summer corset was also the ventilated corset, which instead of a net fabric, they had sections of the corset that had no fabric at all. So here is an example. Anyways, these types of corsets were intended for summer wear, sports wear, or for ladies who were living in warmer climates. These corsets gave one the structure required for the silhouette of the time, but were also lighter, which in turn didn't retain as much heat due to the materials. So after looking through some more advertisements as well as some existing corsets online, I've decided to kind of mix together a few different design aspects to create my own corset. The main inspiration I'm working from is this 1885 Madame Warren corset from the Met Museum. The pattern I'm using for my starting point is the late 1880s corset from Corsets and Crinolines, and I think it is on page, on page 81. So it's that corset right there, and it's a fairly simple design. Before the automobile, she's done a couple corsets from this pattern, and they are all gorgeous. I will link them down below if you want to see what those look like. For the materials, I still will be using a cotille for the center front, center back, and the boning channels. But for the main fabric, I'm going to be using something called a Zweigart Strammen Twist. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. Originally, I was planning on using something like an Ada cloth, but after spending many, many hours looking online, I found the fabric that I'm going to use on eBay and they look quite similar to what was used in originals versus the Ada cloth. So that's what ended up swaying my decision to go with the other fabric versus the Ada cloth. So here is the late 1880s pattern. I enlarged it by 460% from the book. The chart that you compare your inches to just to make sure that the size is correct. But anyway, so here's the pattern. There's a couple alterations that I already see that I'm gonna change. So the pattern right now is not my size. I measured them and with the, uh, these are the pattern measurements, bust, waist, and hip. And then I've added four inches in the back for that so wide the opening is going to be for the laces. So this is what the pattern then comes out to and it is quite a bit different than my measurements. So obviously we're going to be doing some more enlarging of the pattern to make sure it fits. So what I like to do when I'm figuring out these measurements is I will take my own measurements and compare these measurements here to my own measurements and then figure out the difference and then that difference is how much I need to add to the pattern. So like for instance I need to add six inches to the bust and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference between each seam for the bust and then I'll figure out the same for the waist and then I'll figure out the same for the hip. So that is how I figure out my patterns. I know everyone does them a little bit differently but that's just the method that I figured that works for me. I have printed off the pattern from the book and then I've mirrored it and now I'm just going to cut out a smaller paper version of it just to see what this corset actually looks like to see if there's any major alterations that I'll need to make to it before I start working on the larger paper pattern. So this is the shape of the corset. Looking at this, this curves quite a bit out in the front, which for the 1880s, they did have more of a rounded belly. So if that bent in, it could work. I think what I'm gonna do is take some of the angle off of here and straighten that up a bit and then see how that looks. 
Okay, I have the changes that I made to this. So if you look here, I have taken out a section here and a section here, which has made the belly curve a lot flatter in the front. And then I've also added a section here and a section. So I still would have the same circumference from removing these spots here and then adding them here and here. And then I also added a section here and here. So I like the shape of how this pattern looks now. And essentially I'm going to add these changes to the, the larger pattern. And then I also marked the waistline on here. So it'll just be easier for me to uh, transfer all those markings over onto the larger pattern. Anyways, let's get started. So I don't think I got any of that on camera. I didn't realize my camera had turned off while I was doing it. So anyways, I have enlarged the pattern. It's not perfect. This is gonna be my rough pattern uh, until I do the mock-up. And then from there I can see if I need to make any changes. I think it's fitting pretty good. We will just have to see. There we go, so my quick and dirty mock-up. And uh, let's see how this fits. It's not too bad. It fits pretty good. Um, I just have select boning in, in the uh, seams. So first thing I notice is I'm going to have to take the third panel in. Probably like half an inch just off right here. I can still technically get more squish in, but I don't know if I actually want to make that much of a change um, because the material I'm using is a fabric that's not a coutille. So I have to keep in mind while doing this that I'm not making a regular coutille corset and I'm not gonna get the same amount of reduction that I would get in my usual corsets. Also, since it is the 1880s, it does have that little belly pooch. <laughs> So I'm not worried about that. It's a 1880s and 1870s definitely had a curvier silhouette from the side versus uh, the other times. So I think that'll be good. Uh, overall though, it's pretty good for a first mock-up. I'm feeling confident. So time to continue with the next bit. Okay, I've kind of reached a moment where I need to make some decisions. Originally, I was going to do this where I flat fell the seams, but I found the seams are too thick when I do that for this. So I have changed up my plans and I have decided to open up the seams and sew a thin line of stitching on either side. I stitch this one down here so you can just like barely see the stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all the seams like this and then trim them down and then create my 
boning channel pieces out of cotille, place that on top, and then stitch down either side of that. Now I've decided to go that route because I'm trying to make this as secure as possible, but since this is netting, it's been kind of interesting sewing it together because it's it's quite holy and I've been finding that this fabric likes to stretch oddly. So I'm trying to keep this from stretching oddly while still having the strength while still maintaining the whole net corset thing. Now for the center of this usually you would put in a waist tape and I've created kind of like a decorative waist tape but out of cotille. So I've just finished off the edges with some bias tape and so it's a nice clean finish both on the inside and outside and then what I'm going to do is the boning channels are going to go on the outside of the fabric and this is going to go on the inside and then when I stitch it all together it should theoretically be nice and clean. There are some examples like I've been looking at exit ones um, there's one at the Met Museum where it shows you the picture of the inside and it looks like that is the method they used as well. So that is what I'm going with. That is what I'm basing my example off of. Again, because I, I can only see it online. Uh, there's not much comparison I'm able to do, but just from, from what I've been able to see, that looks the most logical. Time to get trimming and stitching and hopefully this will all come out. Actually, here, okay, I haven't stitched the seam allowance down for these yet, but this is what the, the waist thing will look like when it's on, but it'll be on the inside, and then I'll have the boning channels going down each seam. So I think that's really pretty, and uh, I'm, I'm really hoping it uh, comes out nicely. There are some areas where the fabric is starting to kind of, I would say, ripple. And I think that is just from the tension because it's in the areas where there is bias. So looking at some originals, something that I saw was they used strips of fabric over those areas to kind of create something that would hold the fabric in place so it wouldn't stretch anymore. So that is what I'm going to do. I've cut out some cutile and put this on my mannequin and uh, just play around the placement of where I want the design to go and uh, go from there. This is how far I've gotten this evening. I have the bust support put in and I have the hip support put in and I think I'm going to call it a night for now. I am really liking how it's looking and I think once it's done it'll be uh, really cute. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning! So I am on to day two of the project. I have got my decaf coffee and it's time to get started.
I am half done adding all the boning panels and oh my goodness, I love this. It is so, I don't know how to explain it, just the structure of it is, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, this is going to be so good. Okay, I need to finish putting the boning channels on the other side. And with the boning channels on there, we are finishing off day two of making this corset. I love how this is turning out. It has not been easy getting this together, but I really love how it's turning out. So tomorrow the plan is to do boning, um, add the bias binding, and put in the eyelets, and then uh, it's done. It doesn't look that great from the back right now, uh, but I love how this is looking. Alrighty, I will see you tomorrow. Hello, and good morning. Well, it's actually like late afternoon now, but we're back um day three of the build and so today it is going to be binding the corset adding the bones adding the grommets and if there's time possibly flossing the boning channels that may just be something that i add later on uh because i am down to the wire with my time for this so if there's time i can add the flossing but that's probably something that i'm just gonna add after this video goes up and I can post the flossing video on Instagram if you're interested in seeing all that. So let's get started. Before I start adding the boning to this, I just want to say look at the curves in this pattern. This all has to do with the shaping of the pieces. Like that is some intense structure. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the top edge unbound and I'm going to bind that later after I've added the boning because I might end up shaping the top edge a little bit more once I have the boning in. The bottom edge I know is the shape it's going to be so I'm going to bind that first and then add the boning in from the top and then add the binding on the top. So that's what I'm going to do right now. The boning I have is I believe this is the German German boning? I can't remember, I'll have to check. Uh, but if you look at this, this is not my favorite type of boning. I got it from Farthingales. I thought I was ordering the other one, which is the um, synthetic whale bone, but I don't think I got the right one. So anyways, I, I think actually this is the only one they had at the time when I was ordering, but this is the one I'm gonna use. I find the synthetic whale bone is a lot thicker and I just, I like how, it reacts better but hopefully there's enough here because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 26, um, 26 bones that I'm going to be adding to this. So 13 on each side. All right time to get to cutting. Scratch that before I start boning I have to bind this. The binding I'm using is just a double fold bias tape that I have in my stash and so we're gonna do that first and then we'll start boning.
all my bones are cut out and now it's time to bone this thing and through the magic of editing and the bones are in time for the grommets The grommets are in on both sides and the next step I'm gonna do is actually bending the busk. So you can kind of see it here how it has a slight shape to it already. Um, the original one is completely flat down the center front but since the 1880s likes to have the rounded stomach I like to curve my busks. It just makes it a little easier. It makes it a bit more comfortable to wear, I find, and it gives it the correct shape for the 1880s. So when bending the busk, what I've done here is I've kind of just carefully gone along, just pushing it. And then once I get to the waistline, I actually go the other way. Just kind of creates a gentle curve for around the stomach and then I have to try and recreate that so my biggest curve is right here so I just simply kind of brace my thumbs to bend it and it's better to go slow than bend it too much and uh, have it have it in a shape you don't want it to be so already you can see there's just a slight bit of a curve and then just continue adding just a little bit of a curve. A little bit more here. And then we get up to the waist and to do it the other way. And then I'll just make sure that they match up. There we go. So it's not extremely noticeable, but once you have it on, it does create that nice little bit of a, a wave in the front of the corset. Alrighty, so I have tried on the corset and the top of the bust um, is perfectly where it needs to be. So I'm going to finish this up with some binding along the top, add a little bit of lace, and then I will do the reveal. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I absolutely love how this turned out and I think this is actually one of my favorite corsets to date. So I'm actually wearing this over modern clothing so you can actually see how sheer it is. It is so, so comfortable. I, I don't know, I just I love how this turned out. The way I made this one, I didn't want it to be too tight everywhere. So there is like room in the back. I can definitely stick my hands under here and it's very, it's very comfortable. I think the only tight area is the waist area, which has the cutile still in it. I wasn't expecting to get this kind of reduction. Uh, I don't actually know what 
It is actually, let me check. So I'm getting three and a half inches with this, which is pretty amazing. Um, I wasn't expecting it. And as I was saying, this is probably one of the most comfortable corsets I've made. Yeah, I just, I really love how it turned out. If I was to make this again, there are a couple changes that I'd probably do next time. Uh, for instance, I feel like the bust area is slightly low. And also I'd probably make the cups for the bust just slightly narrower. It could just be this fabric, but I find that there is some wrinkling and bubbling under here. And I'm not sure if that is just the material or if it's the way I cut the pattern. But yeah, I, I love how it turned out. So this is the first piece of my 1880s series. And I am so excited to start working on the combinations next. So I hope you liked today's video. And again, I have all the links for all the materials and everything I use down below if you are interested in trying to make a summer corset for yourself. So I will see you all next time and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!